Okay, part two. Let's make Ansel Adams' zone system applicable to real-world photography. Uh, you throw your camera into spot metering, you do this for a week, week and a half, for a few hours every time you go out to shoot, it will become muscle memory within your brain, and then all of a sudden you're going to go, holy crap, my pictures have gotten so much better. This makes so much sense. It helps me understand the dynamic range, not only what my camera is capable of, which is fixed, although I can do post-process uh, pushing in Photoshop or whatever application is you're using, but you want to get everything you can uh, on the side of uh, your RAW or your JPEG image, preferably RAW, of course. Um, so how is this applicable and how do we use it? How simple is it? Throw your camera into spot metering, start looking at your images in a new way so that you're able to get that exposure value, that tonal gradation that you want so that you keep and do not blow your highlights and you're able to keep your shadows. Let's take an example. Let's say we're not necessarily looking at this waterfall here, for example, but if you're exposing for 8, 9, or 10, which would be up here, here would be, this is completely blown up here. We have it 8, 9, and completely blown 10. If you're exposing for that, okay, here we have Ansel Adams Zone System. It's written in sky permanently for all time, gradation between 1 and 10. Here we have the scale, and here we have the image. This is the image you're taking, for example, or it could be any image. Okay. Now, if you're exposing for 8, 9, or 10, remember exposing is so far as spot meeting. Your camera wants to turn everything into perfect tonal gradation between 4, 5, and 6, right at 5. Okay, so if you're exposing for 8, 9, and 10 on this shot, for example, then what I've done is I've taken my image over here and I've brought, in, I've brought 8 and 9 to 5 and 6. So what happens over here is that here we have the limits of our dynamic range, which begins at 1, which means 2, 3, and 4 are basically murdered. Okay? So, how do we get that in? Okay, you're going to spot meter for your 8 or your 9 and then you are open up a couple stops. So this is F, uh, you know, if this is F8 or F11, drop it down to F5.6 or F4. Okay, drop it down to two and a half stops or three depending on the compositional nature of what you want. If you are exposing for 3, 4, 5, let's take a look at this and this is what we are shooting over here even though this is boring. A lot of this is in the shadow. If you are exposing for 3, 4, and 5, you are going to blow out 8, 9, and 10 into oblivion. Okay, so we have some of the waterfall here and okay, so we are going to take this shot even though it is boring. We are going to spot meter for over here so what we are going to do is we are going to be exposing for 3, 4, and 5. And what we're doing is we're taking everything over here that's in the range of 7, 8, and 9, and it's completely blown and murdered. And uh, this is unacceptable. There's a compositional nature so far as uh, the rule of thirds, uh, spiral, vortex, uh, what the eye is drawn to, pattern. One of the things people hate, you know, there's nothing worse. It's just compositionally ugly, nine-tenths of the time, as people do not want to see more than five or ten percent of the picture where the highlights are blown. You just don't want that. The, um, as I told you before, no camera on earth knows what the hell a highlight or a shadow is. They're either spot metering, center metering, or matrix metering to produce sludge. If the scene is mostly a highlight, it's going to silver on the highlights and kill the shadow detail. If most of the scene is a shadow, it's going to blow the highlights and make mud out of the shadow detail. Okay? The spot meter for the highlights open up two stops so you don't blow the highlights. That way you're actually getting into tonal range of your detail and texture on our third little thing here, where your texture and detail range exists between two and eight, which is a stop range of seven. Okay. Here we have our dynamic range. Here is the zone system of Ansel Adams. We can forget one and ten. Okay. So now we're down to nine. So we have 1 through 9 of dynamic range, but we have a detail and texture range of 2 through 8. So we have a 7 stop range of detail and texture. And like I said, we talked back in photography school about black and white photography. We talk about producing silver images. That means most of the images we go off. As much as people talk about bokeh now, if, you, if someone is colorblind, all they can see is black and white. People know what a silver image. When you look at the really professionally well done movies, Everything is silver. There, there's not too much black and there's not too much blown highlights unless it's a crappy film. Everything is rendered in silver so that you have this 
magical, just as much as the golden ratio and the rule of thirds and other things plays a part into the natural heuristics of what human consciousness sees as idealism within an image, or the poetry of the image and composition you want, so is the case that the detail and texture tonal range of a photograph is also the case. And that's not to say that, as we did a contest a few weeks ago, that 80% of the, uh, of the picture is black. That's perfectly fine. But you are exposing for what is illuminated. You're actually creating compositional beauty by absence. Of course, that's a compositional choice, but as long as you're doing that consciously, rather than spraying and praying, and you know, it's like, well, I've taken a hundred shots and one of them is good, the rest of them are crap. It's like, well, you've wasted your time, you wasted the model's time, and that means you're not developing your skills. So you say you're just like a blind squirrel running around with a machine gun. You know, just picture that in your head. And then you know, people have laughed recently when I talk about douchebag photography. What is douchebag photography? And some professionals, not to mention any professional, but some well acclaimed professionals, they're douchebag photographers. They bracket every shot. So they take a shot, it's got a perfect exposure, it's like, okay, one out of those seven is good. That's all they know how to do. They're, they're like a squirrel running around with a machine gun, you know, spraying and praying, and they know that if they spray enough, and, and a wide enough a range, in this case a wide enough of an f-stop, that they're going to get something. But, you know, you don't need to be a squirrel with a machine gun, you know, you need to be uh, either the trained uh, sniper out there that's got... Uh, it's got uh, three cartridges in his pocket, and he has a scope on his rifle, and uh, you know he knows exactly what he's going. He's going to take a shot, you know, from six thousand yards away and hit a tiny target about the size of a basketball. <laughs> That's the sort of photographer you need to be. Spot meter for the highlights. Open up two stops. See, so don't blow the highlights. The simplest approach concentrates on the highlights and ignores the shadows. Dark shadows are one thing, but blown highlights are another. Okay. Shadows are forgivable, but the blown highlights, you know, unless it is a compositionally beautiful shot uh, like this, and this comprises about 15% of the picture, it's unavoidable. It is actually avoidable in post, or if I were to use a gradated a neutral density filter, but this is the compositional beauty that someone went for, and it's gorgeous as it exists. So there's certainly nothing wrong with that shot. As I told you before, digital pictures do not exist. Nobody has ever seen a digital picture. So the notion that the zone system is somehow antiquated is just such BS. Nobody on Earth has ever seen a digital photograph. And as I said, the only real advantage of understanding the zone system is understanding what the hell is going on so that you can focus on making great images rather than pissing around about technique and exposure. Humans love texture. You need to figure out what is the detail textual range of the zone system. Expose for your highlights. Do not blow out your pictures. Open up two stops. You have enough dynamic range such that you're able to capture like these finer details in the texture of the floor of the airport. I assume this is an airport. Okay? He's exposing for, uh, for the outdoor scenery here. Everybody here is in black, but this is perfectly compositionally beautiful. We have the texture in the floor here. So the dynamic range between 2 to 8 is preserved, which is a, is a textual range with a 7 stops of value. Ultimately, we have 11 stops. Two of those can be ignored. Those exist within the zone system of Ansel Adams. And within that, we have a dynamic range of 1 to 9, but within that, we have a textual range between 2 to 8, which is 7 stops of texture and detail. Okay? The average reflectance that a camera wants to expose for is 18% reflectance, which is middle gray, which is roughly a 5 on the Ansel Adams zone system. Your camera is an idiot. You have a pro DSLR so you can manipulate it. So throw your camera in manual. There's plenty of times to use program mode for sports photography and everything else. I'm not someone that says, I am not anyone that says that you need to be shooting your camera all the time in manual. As much as I referred to P as puss mode, you know, it needs to be taken with a grain of salt. I mean, even I shoot program mode if I'm, you know, in a hurry or something has to be done. I mean, I can immediately judge what sort of compensation I need to give to the shot, especially if it's like moving animals or, uh, you know, an action or a sports shot. So... But you need to spend at least a week in manual mode and spot metering, okay, and spot meter for your highlights and understand what Ansel Adams' zone system is. Now, if you're exposing 
for your highlights and you bring it down to the ground. You're shooting outdoors the snow. You're trying to actually give proper exposure and to the snow, but you're going to completely sludge out and lose everything in your shadow detail. Ansel Adams talks about here about the full black to pure white, and he talks about the dynamic range or the textual range, but this is really the detail range that he's referring to. Um, um, yeah, just spot meter for your highlights of whatever your scene is. Like uh, he mentions here on the peeling paint, this is what his eyes actually see. It's a light gray paint on just a, a regular neutral gray wood. Now this is what his camera would tell him to expose for. This is crap. Nobody wants to see this. Okay? Nobody really. And this is what he did. He exposed for the white gray. He opened up two stops and he gave the image the proper dynamic range and scale that it needs. Here's his description of his zone system. He gives each one a gradation. Pure black, near black, textured black, average dark, average dark foliage, on and on. Here's the exact same uh, color blue as is exposed through various stops, through 11 stops, from pure black all the way through pure white. Um, this is going to bring up uh, another image of his. There he talks about, uh, yeah, he points out like some of the really difficult shots that are hard to get like this he actually points out to each each point now what i would do if i saw this if it were in color okay obviously so is that i was exposed for here and this is a nine on ansel adams eleven stop zone system he's exposing he's spot meeting for nine or what i would do i would spot meter for nine i'd open up two two and a half stops so that i'm able to not lose my twos and my threes my twos and my threes are right down in here on this silver rock. I'm able to keep that. Because if I just expose for this, all of this stuff down here will be murdered. It will be murdered. I mean, what's the easiest way to think of how to expose? And what's the easy? How do you actually codify such a huge subject as Ansel Adams' zone system? And it's something really simple. Here we have the scale written in stone, as I've told you before. Here we have our image. Okay. Now, if you expose. For your tonal range of your highlights that are in 8 and 9, that means that you're exposing for them as 18% gray between 4, 5, and 6, basically 5. You've murdered everything down here in 2 or 3. If most of your scene is uh, black or in a gray, if you spot meter for that, it's like, okay, I'm going to spot meter the shadow. I'm going to spot meter right here. Okay, well, what's that going to do to everything up here? That means everything between 7, 8, and 9 is going to be blown to hell, and this shot is worthless. Now shadows are, except, the, the, one of the hard fast rules of compositional beauty is that shadows and dark areas are acceptable but too much blown highlights, if it's more than 5 or 10 percent, you've, you've screwed the pooch. Okay, you're the blind squirrel with the machine gun that's uh, shot the little old lady walking down the street when it comes to photography. <laughs> I mean, I mean, this shot is ruined. Now if I need to make a, a few more videos, like this is a difficult shot. The sun is peeking through here. I'll actually spot meter to keep the uh, informational detail in my grass and then I'll open up two stops so that I don't blow my highlights but I'm able to keep the shadow detail in the bark of what is outside of the light that's pouring in from uh, the eastern side of this picture okay so I'm gonna spot meter throw your camera in manual and spot meter spot meter for your highlights open up two two and a half stops and see how your photography changes experiment with that every two or three hours every time you go out and shoot or spend a week doing it and you'll go oh my god my pictures have gotten so much better we used to oh, everybody now talks about bokeh back in the day we were doing so much black and white photography we talk about silver images and silver images means is that you take Ansel Adams scale like this you fold over and you remove the dynamic range in the far end on both ends and what you have is that you've got a silver image with a perfect textural detail range between two to eight and there might be a certain percentage of blown highlights and lost shadows but this is what we refer to as the silver image where basically 85 percent of the shot exists between two to eight that's the Ansel Adams zone system in a nutshell i hope i made it fast and easy for you to understand if you like this video you can drop me a buck or two tell me to go jump off a cliff